Good morning. Tell us about this special tribunal and how it's all likely to work. So the special tribunal is essentially a body that adjudicates civil proceedings and not criminal proceedings. So members of the public might confuse it with something that the NPA does, mm. which is criminal proceedings. In this case, the special tribunal focuses exclusively on recovering money in a civil claim um, through a tribunal and not through the normal court process, which normally takes quite an extensive amount of time. The tribunal is actually a bit more nuanced and it's also based on pre-investigations done by the SIU specifically. All right, so what have you got to work with at this stage? So as you've correctly said that so far there's cases that are worth 14.7 billion that are ready to be adjudicated by this tribunal. Um, so immediately when it starts we look forward to seeing this tribunal getting its work done and recovering that money from the special tribunal. I mean, from the, the people who have been perpetrators of maladministration, corruption and fraud in government. And most importantly as well, is that um, the special tribunal is really empowered to actually seize assets and also ensure that people appear before it um, quite expeditiously. Fantastic. Good. Hopefully things are getting rolling in this country. Who are we likely to see? Can you give us names and what sort of areas are you looking at specifically? Well, it's hard to say who we're likely to see at this stage. I think the SIU are better placed to answer such a question. Um, but if you had been following the SIU uh, as appearances in Parliament, they've told us that, um, for instance, the SABC alone, I think their case is worth something up to 500 million. And then there are a couple of prominent individuals from the SABC who the SIU has been chasing. So that's the type of cases that you would be seeing at the tribunal. And the sort of information you're getting, I mean, it's, it's rock solid now, I assume, at the point where you will be given the go-ahead to take whatever it is that's needed to, to be taken. Not, not me, the no, SIU. No, yes. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, this is quite an important step for, for government because mm. mostly government has been criticized for saying we should crack, crack down on corruption, we should be hard on corruption. But this is one way to show that actually you're seeing corruption being fought. Um, through a special court and I think that most of the cases that the SIU have investigated and presented thus far to society have been rock-solid cases. There have been cases which are quite credible and which have passed the muster of being well investigated. And Chris, but how long is this all going to take and how do we make sure once we've got the money and the assets that it's going to go to back to where it belongs. So remember the, the SIU investigates maladministration. Mm -hmm. So if you find that a municipality somewhere has lost a certain amount of money due to maladministration, that money would go back to that, that municipality. And also the, the jurisdiction of this tribunal or the period is about three years. So over the next three years, all of the cases that are before the tribunal, before the SIU will be put through this tribunal. So we hope that in the next three years we'll see a great deal of action insofar as corruption busting is concerned. And I should imagine, I mean, we, through the SAU, we've certainly learned how this corruption has taken place, haven't we? So the findings, getting the money back, hopefully it'll position us better to stop this from happening. Absolutely. Remember, also through our um, AG as well, Auditor General, um, we do see how maladministration works, and they are able to refer matters to the SIU for further investigation. The public protector as well does that from time to time to say this matter should be going to the SIU for further administration. So that we are able to actually fully understand how this corruption takes place, but not only understanding it, but we're able to take action, and that's what's important in this case. Is there anything else we need to know about the workings of this tribunal? Well, uh, other, than the, other than it's chaired by a very knowledgeable, knowledgeable judge and a knowledgeable panel, um, I think people should really look forward to its work, and it's inquisitorial in nature, just like what we see at the Zondo Commission. So it's not a typical court per se, mm. um, but it's inquisitorial, which means that the judges themselves will be asking perpetrators or alleged perpetrators and witnesses very critical questions. And, I mean, this is probably out of your remit now, but hopefully they'll end up in jail too. Hopefully then the NPA would use that information mm. as well and ensure that people do end up in jail where, where it's required. Crispin Perry, thank you very much. Thank you.